Hi everyone, this is the video manual for the Ondo 135 Pocket as well as the 135 Panoramic Mark III. Every camera gets uh, supplied with a cotton protective camera pouch to prevent scratching and damage during use. You will also receive a snap-on filter mount uh, with an exposure chart as well as a an elastic shutter that you secure on the camera during transport so you don't have any accidental uh, exposures. The 125 pocket as well as the 135 pano both feature a 0.2 millimeter pinhole with a focal length of 25 which gives us an f-stop equivalent of 125. They both have horizontal and vertical field of view engravings for composing our shots as well as a built-in leveling bulb to keep our horizons from sagging. There is also strap on strap strap mounts for so for setting up a neck strap as well as winding direction indicator engravings so we know in which direction we have to turn when we're advancing to the next frame. There's also a standard tripod mount so you can secure the camera to your tripod while you're shooting and that would be it for the camera features. To load the camera we have to first remove the back which is held together by strong magnets and we do this with this help of, uh, of a little recess and we just pull the back apart. To get access to our wine, to our take-up spool, we have to remove the knobs as well. They are held together by strong magnets. To load the film, we first need to open the take-up spool by twisting the cap off. Approximately quarter of a turn should do the trick. And we proceed by taking the inside out. Make some room here. Next we're going to need some tape and a pair of scissors. We're using just regular painter's tape in this case. Any, any tape should do. And we tape it on the bottom part of this protruding thing. Okay. We'll be using some FK Infrared 820 and we just tape it to the beginning of this take up spool. After that we load the whole thing into our spool and secure the lock in place. Keep in mind that this lock has to be aligned with the flat part if it's gonna be twisted sideways like this you probably won't be able to close your camera and there could be light leaks in this part. So that's how it has to go bring the camera back into view and insert the whole contraption back inside the camera lock it with the winding pins and wind let's say one full turn into the take up spool and now we have to take up slack in the actual film so we wind clockwise until we feel tension and the film starts moving backwards Okay, so now that the film is loaded, we have to put the back on and a new feature with the Mark III's is that it has this tiny clicker that clicks on the perforations of the film and that tells us how far we have to advance to get to our next shot. The clicker is movable, you can move it slightly up or down so that you can align it with the, with the, film, with the, with the film perforations. In this case, everything should work fine from the first go. And for advancing, we need to count for the first frame 13 clicks and every other frame 9 clicks. So first frame 13 and for every other frame there's 9 clicks. With the panoramic, if we're using it on the, on the Leica setting, you, you do the same as with the pocket. 
well if you choose to take the dividers out and use the camera in a pano setting you need to first count uh, 24 clicks and for the rest of them it's 16 clicks okay. and this camera is virtually the same uh, except that it has also panoramic capabilities it still has the clicker okay so let's advance to our first frame when you, before you start advancing make sure that your shutter is closed so that you don't end up exposing your film while you're advancing so let's count 13 clicks for our first frame. Okay, that should be sufficient for our first uh, exposure. So let's make a theoretical exposure. And for next frame, we will count only nine clicks. Nine clicks and we are at the second exposure. Once we reach the end of the film, we will feel tension. So don't try to force it or you might rip the film at the, at the beginning. And that would be maybe problematic while you're uh, trying to develop your film or send it off to a, to a lab. So don't try to force it. When you come to the end, it's done. And then you have to turn it opposite of the winding direction indicator so that you essentially bring the film back to its original spool. So here we're gonna just turn a few times because we didn't use up the whole film, but if you used up the whole film, you're gonna have to turn quite a bit to get to the end of the spool. Once you feel tension, you can stop and the film pretty much dislodged itself from the, from the takeoff spool. And that's it. That should be loading and shooting. As for the actual um, exposure time, every camera is supplied with a, with an exposure chart. It's written on the actual chart how to do it. So you set your light meter or camera to the film's ISO, which in this case was 25-ish, and your aperture to f22. With those two settings, you take a reading of what you're trying to take a picture of and read the corresponding column for your exposure. So for instance, if we took one eighth of a second, the resulting time would be four seconds. You follow this chart, both for the pocket and the panel. And I have to mention that on some of our cameras, we had a typo, which you can see here. This should be 32 seconds, not 32 minutes. It skips from 16 seconds to 32 seconds to one minute and not 32 minutes. That would be way too long uh, for such an exposure and it would overblow your image. Our apologies for that. We fixed it, that mistake for now. So it shouldn't be an issue in the future. And that would be it. The filter thread for both the pocket and the panel is 52 millimeters. Let's see if we can get this. No, yeah, 52 millimeters, and it works fine with both cameras. There's no obstruction, and that's it. So, thank you for watching. If you have any more questions, leave us a comment or get in touch. Uh, on our email. Bye.